right, I do believe it's another day. Um, I need to get some more lighting set up here. It's wires and everything. Anyways, we are at the bus and um, I've been working on getting a remote starter alarm system and GPS tracking and all that stuff installed in the van. Um, how's our audio levels? I think we should be good. Might be a little quiet. Oh, let me get to where I can see chat. That might be helpful. So how are we all doing today? Uh, looks like we've got White Raven, Dee Dee, Chris, Boats, Ray, uh, Deep Park, Old Man, uh, Thomas, Dan, Bruce, Mike C, Ken, how we doing? Um, yeah, the warehouse is a little bit um, less full than it was in the photo for the thumbnail, but <laughs> this week I was going to rest before the trip uh, for a soccer tournament because that's a lot of work. But then I decided I needed to do a bunch of stuff on the van, so I haven't exactly been resting. I've spent four hours so far on getting the remote starter installed. And, um, uh, hang on, let me grab a beverage and also another light because, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I have a wireless mic. I can keep on yammering about stuff. Um, I ran out of coffee. So I actually have on the way right now a, a couple of coffees from McDonald's. So they should be here at some point. What's the battery like on this light here? 1.3 hours. That should be good. <clears throat> Let's grab a beverage from the fridge. <clears throat> yeah, so <laughs> the wiring on this van, uh, partially because it was a theft recovery, um, it's not like messed up, but, oh man, this, this camera lens makes me look much wider than normal. Yeah, we'll blame the lens. That's it, right? Um, but yeah, being, seeing as how it was a theft recovery, just getting this light set up here, the, um, the wiring's a bit of a mess. So I've been having to repair a bunch of the wiring harnesses and then, no, I'm not going to insert ads. Go away. Um, then I can install all the stuff. So anyways, that's been a whole thing. Okay, that's way too bright. Let's turn that down a bit. Come on, turn down. There we go. Okay, how's that? I think that's slightly better. There's this uh, this little webcam up here. I I never really use it, but I typically lock, uh, put it here to block this light a little bit. Actually, I can move that. And uh, you may notice I'm wearing some weird headset. Normally I have a Bluetooth earpiece that I use for streaming in here, but I've got this fancy Jabra thing. I'm not using the microphone on it because that would sound horrific. Uh, good audio and video, slightly low, but clear and audible. Let's fix that. Shield your earballs. I'm going to do the Windows thing that Windows does, and we're gonna make this louder. So let's crank this up to 99. And then, I think as long as I don't shout, we should be good. So you turn that down a little bit. Okay, so today's stream not brought to you by Cherry Bubbly. <clears throat> oh, looks like my coffee is making progress. Oh, it should be here shortly. Excellent. Mm, does that sound better? All right. Uh, Richard says, just got my Quantum Edge HD. No clock or trip meter. Um, does the joystick have a display on that chair at all, or is it just missing those things? Um, <laughs> yeah, rest is funny, exactly. Been missing the bus streams. Yeah, unfortunately, well, I can press a button for the Super Chat thing, but IFTTT decided they wanted money, and uh, they started charging for the whole integration thing. So I can press a button here, and we can get the... Uh, I think it at least <laughs> at least plays the music. I don't think that rotating light works anymore. I had to rob the controller for something else. And then I don't think the I think the lights on the ceiling will just turn it off. They won't do the rainbow thing. I'm trying to reduce the amount of motion here. Um, so let's see here. That music was drilling your brain, like in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, I was scrolling through the catalog trying to find some music to play, and that just happened to be the one. Uh, let's see here, looking at things, there we go. 
Do, 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 do. Yeah, but it only tells the battery. Interesting. Um, you should be able to hit the home button on it, the one that looks like a house, and go into the settings and maybe turn some of that on or off. Um, does it have a speedometer at all to tell you how fast you're going? Uh, tried one of those melty butt connectors on a repair and trip the battery protection. Be careful of overspray. Oh yeah, so I actually just attempted to use um, some of those self-soldering or whatever butt connectors. And uh, I don't think the, well, two factors. One, the wires were pretty large and solid copper. It was the ignition power wire from the ignition switch. So those have a pretty high thermal radiation as far as, hang on here. I need to keep an eye on this, otherwise the person that shows up is going to go to the wrong place. Oh, one stop along the way. Um, anyways, I don't think the heat gun got hot enough. I tried to use a couple of them and it didn't work. Then I got out a lighter and I was trying that. And I'm like, what am I doing? <coughs> Excuse me. Then I tried to use a soldering gun, like one of those big ones. Turns out it didn't have enough power. So I just wound up having to use normal butt connectors on everything, so... I prefer to solder things, but whatever. Hey, Doc, how's it going? I was going to ask you how you're feeling today, Doc. <laughs> Is it still giving you trouble? Oh, man. <laughs> Has there been a, a, a slight tingle in the back of your brain, though, that was like, hmm, I kind of like that, even though it was terrible? <laughs> Sorry, side conversations. Um, no speedometer either. Oh, I wonder if it's one of the... Uh, hang on here. Um, hmm... How do I do this? Uh, I'm going to stream on this computer. I think we'll use Vivaldi on this. Um, let me open this up. It might be the the new style Edge joystick. Let me pull up the browser here. Oh, my back is so sore. <laughs> um, Brokenwheelchairs.com. Let's see if OBS still knows how to make the internet do something. Uh, let's see... There we go. Does your joystick look like... Da, 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 da. Does it look like this? This big one here in the middle, the Q-Logic 3E. Um, screen. Use the super small white ones, and even they were not melting. That's how I ended up overheating everything. Yeah. I'm sure there's a version of those self-soldering butt connectors. I use the term soldering loosely, but... I'm sure there's a version of them that's good, but there's probably a whole lot of them that are also pretty terrible. Uh, oh, it's an Any Plus? Oh, so it is this one? As opposed to... Do I have an Any Plus on here? Well, the picture's kind of small on this one here. Um, yeah, this one, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to play with those yet, so I'm not sure. Uh, how to set those up. X850 doesn't have a display. Yeah, that's an older chair, though. You were still running the old, like, pilot electronics on that thing, I think, Robin. Um, hey, Mark, how we doing? Oh, this is what I hate. So, I'm waiting for this delivery driver. Well, I'll just have to keep an eye on the cameras. Because there are other buildings on this property, and I do not want them to go there. I sent the guy a text, but... Hasn't responded like they never do. By the way, interesting note. Um, I watched a video by Mr. Who's the Boss last night. Um, it was actually kind of interesting. I'll give you guys a link to it. But it was about um, you know, like Uber and Amazon and all that stuff. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, Chris, welcome in. Uh, the internet is starting to break. Here's why. It was kind of an interesting video. Um, so I will give you guys a link to that. It talks about like Uber and Amazon and a bunch of other random stuff and their dark trends or whatever. It's not like a Doomer video, but uh, it's kind of interesting. You'll watch it and be like, oh, hmm, interesting. Um, oh yeah, by the way, this weird jobber headset I'm wearing. I, uh, I was going through the warehouse and I found it's got, like, the base station. Oh, it's still got the plastic on it. Oh. Has your order. Keep your phone nearby in case they need to reach you. Okay. But yeah, it's got this little docking station and stuff. 
um, the swivel down microphone, which sounds like a telephone, so we're not using that. Um, but yeah, I was going through the warehouse, I found that. But yeah, uh, headed out tomorrow, gonna go to somewhere, play some soccer, and then probably be back like Tuesday. I'll uh, probably record some video clips. I may not make a dedicated video because the place we're going is gonna be a real challenge for the lighting and I'm barely gonna be able to play soccer, so it'll be interesting for sure. Out here in Texas, they don't speak the English, yes. Looks like one of those trucker things. Yeah, it does kinda. Okay, so looks like the driver is making a stop on the way. Must have coffees. Oh, so I think we're going to play around with, um, hang on, I have to open this off screen. Um, one of the things we decided to do with our soccer team, I don't think there's anything on the back of this, is uh, whenever you get a yellow card, I'm, we're making these little, actually I'm making them right now, but you have to put a lemon sticker on the guard of your chair anytime you get a yellow card. We might do penalty kicks also, um, but, uh, oh, I guess I didn't use that video. So I filmed a whole bunch of stuff over the last, I don't know, whatever, and decided I couldn't use it in a video, but I went to Office Depot or Office Max yesterday. So I know they're expensive, right? Instead of firing up the big vinyl machine and going to a supplier and getting all the big rolls, I was like, oh, I'll just go to Office Depot and get some A4 printable vinyl and uh, just use that. I went in there and for three sheets, it was $20. Looking around the shelves, there was nothing under $20. The average price was about 40. And they had this one pack of adhesive name tags that was $90. And I'm just looking around and I'm like, I can't pay these prices. So I came back here and got on Amazon and this was $8, this was $12. There's, I think 25 pages, no 20 pages each, uh, one glossy, one matte. Um, so yeah, I hadn't been in Office Depot in a while. I looked around the rest of the store at prices too and it was just absolutely insane. So we might try, around, try playing around and making some of those stickers here because um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> my brain has departed doing all that work and wiring and stuff. I've, I've having to compare three different wiring schematics. So the old remote starter slash alarm was this auto page, which was a super nice unit back in the day. Um, it has so many connectors on it though, all across the front. And if that's not enough, you open a hatch and there's more connectors down in there. Um, but, uh, Trying to find a remote for this thing cost more than an entire, like, setup. And Amazon had this deal. I got this bundle thing. It was 141 bucks, but it comes with an alarm remote starter combo and also comes with the LTE connected GPS tracking module. Normally just that module is 150 bucks, but everything showed up. So I think it's just one of those weird Amazon things where stuff is cheaper. The tingle is there, but my nose is totally stopped up. Oh, weird. Huh, that's interesting, Doc. Normally that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait, freewheeling. Sitting here, my brand new F5 VS. It's fabulous. Configuration was a challenge. Keeps disconnecting. Yeah, that programming with the power platform is still has much to be desired. Um, Okay, it looks like the driver is slowly heading my way now. The rep loves the app, says it's easier and it's very flexible. Nice, that's awesome, man. Uh, let's see if I missed anything else here. Have you noticed that the F3 gets better over time with torque and motors? Yeah, at around 100 miles, you'll have more torque um, and maybe a tiny bit more speed after the motors wear in. I actually had to detune my chair a little bit after 100 miles because the torque jumped up enough to where it was slightly annoying. 823 miles on the F3, nice. Um, not sure if you saw the video posted yesterday. Uh, was that the one talking, you showed some joystick that I'd never seen before. There's something about the permobile swing away in the latch. If that's the one you're talking about, yeah, I saw that, Robin. 
Pull up the drive-thru and ask them if they're ordering with the headset on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, got the Rovi X3 six months ago. You helped me decide which chair to get. Uh, Mr. VR King, is that your, how you say that? Yeah, hopefully it works out for you. Those chairs are not super fast, but the little bit of playing around I did with them, uh, the suspension seemed really good. Uh, let's see. Had to buy an M300 motors with low hours because after cleaning the brushes, it locked up. Oh, dang, that sucks. Hey, John, how's it going? Um, okay, uh, my coffee is about to pull up. So I'm going to open this door, which is basically the face of the sun. You'll know what I mean here in a second. Yeah, face of the sun. I'm gonna go fetch my coffee. I don't know what the range of this microphone is, but uh, you'll probably hear me uh, screaming at someone. No, don't throw it on the ground. So, coffee incoming, potentially. No idea if the guy saw my text, so I'm gonna scurry out here real quick. What kind of cars are you supposedly driving? A Lexus RX. I found though with Uber Eats, usually the drivers and the cars are completely incorrect. All right, signal might drop out here. Hang on a second. Do, 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 do. I can see them. Oh, I guess I left the door open on the van. Oh, that's because a bunch of wires are hanging out. I should probably not close that. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good one. Cruising through a gravel parking lot with a paper bag full of beverages. Oh yeah, and in my rummaging around and removing kick panels in the van, I found some wires that were, what's the plural of abrasion? Abrasing? Rubbing? I don't know, I found some damaged wires that were rubbing. Uh, they were part of the old alarm, so luckily I can get rid of those. Oh, there better be straws in here. Apparently, drinks come in a paper sack. Okay, let's uh, close up the uh, light inferno here. And I'm going to have to do some more repairs of the floor in this bus, I think. It was not designed for a 600-pound power chair to run around in. It's done pretty good. We've only had to fix the the stuff here by the door, and that's because there was water damage. Um, but yeah, could you guys hear any of that? So yeah, apparently coffee's in a sack. I got two of them. Oh man, I, uh, so I got the remote starter hooked up. It's connected to LTE. I can use my phone to start the van, but I have to program it now so that it's compatible with starting a diesel engine which means once the key turns on, making sure this doesn't have stuff on it. Um, once the key turns on, you have to wait until the glow plugs turn off. And also the starter has to crank for a lot longer than a gasoline engine does. So I have gotten it to start. We've at least gotten the basics hooked up, but need to, oh, that was it. The, um... hey, how's it going, Melissa? Um, the parking light output is a negative switch and I have to feed power into the parking light circuit to get it to work. But conveniently, there's this random relay that's all wired up, mounted to the bottom of the dash. So I think I can repurpose that. <coughs> Hang on, coughing. Just a second here. Um, the other thing too is there's a tachometer output wire that I have to connect as well. So that's going to take a lot of fiddling around. 
But the hard part, I think, is done. You could hear? Nice. Is there enough to go around? Well, I have two, so uh, cheers. <laughs> um, went to the Love's truck stop and I'm 725 pounds. Nice. Yeah, though, uh, truck scales are not as good with lower um, weights or whatever, but recycling centers are a good spot to go for sure because they pay you based on weight, so the scale is going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. A coffee IV. Oh, I was at the this one restaurant called the Margarita Factory the other night, and I don't I don't drink or do alcohol or anything like that. I'm actually allergic to it. But uh, I noticed this one table got this thing delivered, and it was like this little IV looking bag with a straw coming off the bottom. I was like, what the heck? Actually, hang on. Am I supposed to look look up this stuff on YouTube? Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Dan, how much did the motors wind up costing you on on eBay for the M300? Did you get a decent deal on them? <laughs> yes, Robin. Do you see the light? Um, let's see here. Menu. Uh, drinks menu. Are they going to give us pictures? Um... Beaverton, I guess. Uh. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's find. Yeah, I think you can see that maybe. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like an IV bag looking thing. It was really strange. <clears throat> Let's see. Did the microphone cut out at all or could you hear it the whole time? I've got the receiver way up here. So then, I mean, we're good 10 feet off the ground right here, or it is. Is there a meme printer today? Um, unfortunately not. I have not figured out a way to transfer the email address between printers. I think what I might wind up doing is having different email addresses for different locations I stream in, maybe. Um, I basically got the identical printer here. Um, but yeah, Margarita Cheesecake Factory Experience, yes. Uh, paid three eighty nine dollars with tax, shipping is free. That's not too bad, I guess. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. Okay, um, uh, trying to remember. Okay, uh, let's look at our much cheaper, more bountiful vinyl here. Um, I got matte and gloss because the matte said it was, um, this is an OCD thing. I can just open this and it'll rip, but I like to open it without it ripping. There we go. The matte vinyl said it was abrasion resistant, whereas the glossy said it was not. So I'm going to see what these look like here. Plastic noises. Ooh, that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, I think we might try this first. And I've got some artwork loaded up here. Oh, and I got a backup pair of those uh, vertically polarized fishing glasses that I use in case I break those this weekend at some point. Um, okay, so that's garbage. I just cleaned in here and there's tons of room and I'm filling up the floor with stuff already. All right, let's move this over there. That can go over there. We'll load this into the print orb. So many boxes and bags. Uh, oh, it turned itself off. I think we can load this into... Uh, hang on, I can't see here. I think it's printed side up. Yes, we can load this into the... Um, actually, which side do you print on? I can't tell. Which side is the vinyl? 
Um, I think that's it. We'll load it into the manual feeding slot here on the back. I'm gonna get a slither over to the edge of my chair to do this. Sounds of rummaging. Okay, there we go. There. <laughs> Preparing to print from rear feed slot, it says on the screen. Uh, oh, apparently laying that on the keyboard was pressing the space bar a whole bunch of times. Uh, it cracked for a second, but you got all that nice. Yeah, I really like these little DJ mics. They're pretty cool. I have noticed, though, that a lot of YouTubers put electrical tape over them. I don't know if that's to get rid of the shiny logo, but a lot of the big YouTubers that use these, they have tape over the front, which I'm not sure why, but the only thing I can think of is the reflectivity. Okay, um, where is my artwork that I downloaded? Do, 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 downloads. Um, I think it's this one. No, that's a random joystick. Oh, Lemon 1. There we go. So, uh, let me... Uh, which monitor do I have set up for sharing? I think it was the other one. Hang on here. Let me minimize all this stuff. So I don't dox anyone. I'm going to display capture and see what happens here. Okay, it is that one. Um, I think you can see it, but this is the Lemon sticker. I'm going to make. <laughs> I think that'll be great on the side of uh, side of people's chairs. They're, let's make them pretty small. Oh, do I have Illustrator on here? I think I do. Uh, Adobe Illustrator. There we go. CS6. Old school. Should probably open chat back up here. Oh, actually, I can see chat there. I keep forgetting that. Um, my F5 is so badly beat up because I'm constantly crashing into stuff. Yeah. Getting into a schedule with a new pup. Oh, nice. Yeah, new puppies are great. I got the motors from Silver State Mobility. Oh, okay. I've seen those guys all over eBay. Uh, Ask for the bolts. And he gave them to you. Nice. Yeah, they use these long, skinny bolts that are pretty easy to break. Mm, excuse me, if you torque them down too much. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, can I... I think I can share this other screen without anything bad happening. Uh, let's do... There we go. Okay, so we got Illustrator fired up here. So, new. And... Lemon V1. We're going to do A4. And we'll do inches. And CMYK should be fine. Uh, we wanted to do it the other way, though. Uh, let's see. Document setup. Uh, I haven't used this version in a while. Uh, that's fine. We can print it this way. And then let's go ahead and add our lemon, which is going to be obnoxiously large. Yeah. So transform scale uh, uniform will go nineteen percent. There we go. That's probably still a little bit big. Actually, where's our rulers? View. Uh, uh, rulers. There we go. Show rulers. Okay, so that's three inches. That's way too big. So, yes, yeah, so we're playing around with uh, Illustrator on this stream, apparently. Uh, scale. We'll do 50, I think. And that's about one and a half inches. All right, that should be good. And then... We're just going to run a whole sheet since they're A4 already, and uh, we got to use a whole page if we do anything, so whatever. <laughs> so 
is exciting stuff right here. I don't know, I just think these little smiling lemons are hilarious. Eh, we didn't quite get them straight, but whatever. Uh, and the last one, there we go. All right, we have lemons. Uh, just looking at chat here. Hey, David, welcome in. Um, any solutions for loose footrest? Um, are you talking about them folding up and down or just wobbling or what, which axis of looseness are we talking about here? I wonder if the stones are getting smaller and smaller. Wait, stones, what? Uh, F the lemon. <laughs> you have a vinyl cutter. Um, so I had a, um, actually, do I still have it? I know it sounds weird to say that if trying to remember if I have a $10,000 piece of equipment or not, uh, Roland BN20 sign machine, um, which is a printer plotter basically. Um, so these are all over the place, but whatever, that's fine. I'm probably just going to cut them with scissors. So, uh, we've got this here printer and then, uh, output so quality. I'm not used to CS6. How do we, oh, there we go, setup. Uh, operating system, yeah, okay. There we go, preferences. And then I have a high quality, that's gonna be rear feed slot. Paper was set, yes, I know. Uh, landscape quality high. Oh, actually, I think we need to set this up for, um, Ultra premium glossy paper. Actually, I'm trying to remember which setting. I think premium presentation matte. Okay, rear slot. Okay, um, quality high. Okay, I think we got all the things, so let's let her rip and see what happens. The print heads on this machine are a little bit grumpy, so we'll see what happens here. All right. Printing Lemon V1. Oh no, it spit out my paper. Why did it do that? Load a single sheet into the rear, okay. Loading again. I really hope I've got it the right side up. If this is upside down, this is gonna make such a huge mess. <laughs> Load a single sheet of paper into the rear fleet, uh, touch something for details. Okay, we have loaded. It's detecting the edges. Lights are blinking. It's making crunching noises. Okay, it has started. I really hope I didn't put it in upside down. <laughs> There's going to be a huge mess in here if we didn't. But uh, yeah, anyways, so we have lemons. we will see how that works. And probably just for the purposes of this tournament, I'm just going to cut them out by hand and do it that way. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Thomas got the FIVS to, oh, you got your F5 on V. Okay, never mind. I thought you were saying you got it today. Um, uh, that was, uh, who was it? Freewheeling got their new chair. Wonder how many cars you flipped off. <laughs> yeah. I, I can do it well with my right hand, but that's the one, I'm not gonna do it, but that's the one I'm usually, steering with so I can kind of take it off for a second. Can't do it with my left hand though. I uh I can I can do all my fingers. I can do these two and kind of that, but I can't do the middle finger with that hand. <laughs> Fun fact. Oh wait, do we have the uh there we go. <laughs> Oh, the humanity. The dealer can't connect my chair because Permobile didn't install the necessary part. Oh no, that's dumb. Hang on, I'm gonna shine a flashlight down in this thing and make sure it's not just spraying ink everywhere. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. Oh, we have little lemons. 
I think I'm going to wind up using the gloss paper. Uh, what I saw there for a split second um, makes me think the, the gloss will look better. Um, did they say, uh, Depark, did they say what part's missing or what's going on with that? Servo pop-up, yeah. I like I want to have like a caregiver or something with me and be like, hang on, this is going to take a minute and have them grab my hand and fold the fingers for me so I can do it. <laughs> oh. C6 nerve damage causes your middle finger not to work. Yeah, I'm kind of a weird combo platter of stuff. Um, I have like C6, 7 function generally. Uh, my most recent imaging though showed things developing up to C4. Um, it's not enough to cause issues yet, but my whole thing is not static, so that's fun. Um, one of the reasons I'm trying to get into a traditional dwelling to live in that's easier and less work, I'm not selling the bus, I will be keeping it because it's great for road trips, but, um, I need to calm down and take it easier and do stuff. Like, even leaving here, if I want to, like, I usually carry, like, uh, a backpack and a couple of bags with me when I head somewhere to film a video. I have to get in and out, like, two or three times, depending on stuff, and reach down and open the lift and do all the doors. And, it, like, it'd be so nice to just go through a door and get into a van. <laughs> um, not yet. They're going to call you by end of day. Huh. Interesting. I wonder what they forgot to put on there or something. Ooh, it's done. Oh, I'm in speed too. No wonder I'm like got unintended acceleration happening. All right. Ooh, these actually look decent. I think that's about the right size. Um Let me peel off a corner here and make sure we... Apparently they are super glued together. Oh, yeah, we printed on the correct side. Let me grab the skizzers real quick and uh, see how these adhere to assorted things. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, yeah, scissors. Yeah, when I start focusing on doing wiring and stuff... Um, my brain, like, I don't know if it uses more energy or something, but when I'm done, I just can't, like, think straight or do anything. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you want these, you know, trimmed out and everything, but... Okay, so, let's do the stretch test. Yeah, so that's, uh, whoop. Hang on. There we go. Um, pretty durable stuff. Uh, what will it stick to? Let's try a challenging surface like um, this empty can of bubbly. Actually, that's not challenging at all. Okay, so it goes on and comes right back off just fine. No problem there. Yeah, I think we'll try this again with the, um, I don't think I can show this on camera super well. We'll try it again with the, uh, come on camera, adjust. Oh, I think I locked the exposure off. Did I? Yeah, it just doesn't have the glossiness that I want necessarily, so... We'll try it on the uh, on the gloss paper and see what that gives us. Wait, did I lock or unlock the exposure? Ah, whatever. But yeah, this stuff seems to work all right. And for the price, um, yeah, let's put this uh, right here. This is sort of a uh, stain-resistant plastic, so it'll be interesting to see how that stays. Okay, um, 
have cerebral palsy and can't give the middle finger either, sadly. <laughs> Dang. Although doing it around here is probably not a good idea. C67 almost pinched off. I got really bad pains and needles using your hand. Uh, yeah, see, I've been pretty lucky. Like, I apparently I should be in pain, but I'm not perceiving a lot of it. So that can lead me to not be careful and potentially cause more damage, though. So I have to be careful with that. Uh, Golden Retriever, be your best friend forever. Nice. Sometimes I put my hand up to my face and then push up the middle finger. Oh, yeah, that's a great way of doing it, actually. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love it, Robin. <laughs> Why would Perlmbly use the app and not a programmer? Well, Ken, um, that's because the new Power Platform does not have the modality to use a programmer at all. They claim they're going to be developing it, but you have to use the uh, Quick Config app, which is only available to uh, DMEs, dealers, and people that work at Permobile. It can take up to two minutes to connect to the chair, and sometimes disconnects. It does like an ad hoc Wi-Fi sort of thing, and then uses the Bluetooth to like identify that particular chair. Um, they kind of push Power Platform out a little easy. The system's really cool. Once they get all the bugs worked out, it's going to be pretty nice. I just hope they don't lock everyone out of programming, because they could easily do that. Uh, I just made my girl practice getting my fingers in the proper middle finger configuration. <laughs> you get a time and see how fast you can do it. <laughs> uh, I, love how, I love how the, the function um, uh, benchmark today is if you can use your middle finger. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, something, something, display. Let's go ahead and run this again, but on the ultra gloss paper. And uh, hang on, I forget how there is a way to automatically, let's see, arrange, no. Uh, these ones are slightly off the page. We'll just kind of, yeah, whatever. Uh, so let's go file print. And actually, I wonder if it says on this packaging what print settings are good. Actually, it probably wouldn't hurt to look at the Amazon reviews. I bet those would actually clue us into the proper settings. Oh, setting instructions. Print a test copy on regular paper, adjust and reprint, media quality to glossy and best. Okay. I'll just do what I've done before on some of these. So continue, preferences, and then we will do ultra premium, high, and then rear feed slot, eight and a half by 11. And let's save this as a preset. Uh, A4 vinyl. Hmm. Did that save? Uh, eh, whatever, it doesn't matter, close. Uh, so let's uh, open this up and see how our gloss works. The brand is Homesto, Homasto, I don't know. Oh, it's curled slightly. Oh, it, it's labeled front side, that's handy. Yeah, and especially with the matte version of this stuff, you got to be careful about getting fingerprints on it if you're doing, you know, any sort of production work. Although you probably wouldn't be using this stuff if you were. Yeah, that stuff got curled. I'm going to have to leave that under a pile of books. My many leather-bound books. Okay, print. Okay, um, oh, and then print. This feels a lot heftier. Okay, load a single sheet. Oh, I've got two sheets here. That's why it feels heftier. <laughs> load 
this in here. Okay, make sure it actually grabs it. Edge detection in progress. All right, and it has begun. So we'll see how this turns out. Oh. oh, man. Yeah, I think it's just because my muscles are tired from doing all the stuff I've been doing and all the work. I've actually lost a little weight, but I've got right now a little bit of the quad belly thing going on, which is always interesting. <laughs> okay, back to chat here. Uh, let's see. It took forever to connect and disconnect multiple times, but the programming was cool. Yeah, once it gets connected, it's pretty sweet. The other thing, too, is they update the firmware on the chair and the app software, and those both have to be in sync. Um, so, yeah. Right, White Raven says, I can indeed use my middle finger. Excellent. Go metric and use your pinky. Ask the dealer for access. They said, nope. Yep. They are not going to do that. Um, that's what I'm saying. There's... And this is coming from someone inside Permobile. There are rumors that the OEM Arnet dongles will work, but haven't, hasn't been able to confirm that yet. Um, plugging in the regular ones do nothing. So they could just very easily decide, hey, we're not going to use these anymore and move on. But yeah. Uh, hey, Nigel. Uh, let's see here. Looking through chat. Good thing I happened to mindlessly follow YouTube link and see the day early notification. Nice. Yeah, I was wondering if that video would go out because I didn't turn on monetization. Um, and sometimes they don't notify people if you don't do that. I wasn't going to play 30 seconds of ads for a one minute video. But yeah. <laughs> for a while from my accident, that's the only finger that works. Nice. Oh, man. I have to be careful stretching. If I get too straight, then things get weird. Ooh, coffee. So not much winter in Minnesota this year, eh? Um, oh, that was it. Um, can I show this? I think I can. Um, so I was doing some research here before the stream. I know this is a little bit too wide, but... Um, there is apparently pin 19 from the PCM from the engine in the van that will have, it says CTO or clean tack output. I think I found that wire just before the stream started. Um, I think it might have already been connected and run inside. Because um, the other problem with doing a remote start on a diesel vehicle is, you've, so you turn it on, the, you have to crank the starter for longer than a gasoline engine. But also, you have to wait for the glow plug light to go off to start it when it's stone cold but the glow plugs stay on so a lot of remote starters look at the voltage and when the voltage spikes up it decides oh the engine started but with this thing the glow plugs stay on after it's running so when they turn off after it's been running for a minute it detects something funky going on and then shuts it right back down so i'm gonna have to get that tack wire hooked up i think that should be all right but um yeah, I was just scrolling through old forums trying to find things. Oh, our lemons are done. Oh, wait. I have some lemonade squincher. I should probably mix up some of that. Oh, I like how these look. Yeah, I think we're going to rock with these. Let me zoom this in just a little bit before it goes into digital mode. Oh, that's digital. There we go. And now, we get the lighting right here. I think you should be able to see the quality pops a little bit better with this um, glossy stuff. So yeah, I think that's nice. Let's see. The vinyl's made by the same like company or whatever. 
So uh, I would assume it should be the same quality and all that. Dries pretty quick. I wonder if these are too small. I think they should be all right. I want them to be just small enough to where people don't notice them, unless they're just sitting there looking and then they're like, wait, what is that? Why is that on your chair? Oh yeah, this has that, uh, what do you call it? Sort of a diffraction grating, what am I trying to say? You know when you look at some uh, printed materials, it has sort of like a rainbow sheen to it for the uh, chemicals they use? Uh, the old photo, die sub photo printers were kind of like that, but yeah, I really like this stuff. I think I'm gonna rock the, uh, the glossy. Yeah, I think this is cool. All right, let me, I'm gonna trim this out really small and try sticking it to a curved surface and see how well the edges, although I should probably be doing this before I peel the backing off. But I wanna stick it to a curved surface and see how the adhesion works with this stuff. So I've been getting my fingers all over the back of it. So we have the case here that the DJI mics come in. I'm gonna wrap this around the edge. The top is smooth and the side is serrated. Actually it almost looks 3D printed. So I'm just gonna press this on here and then press it pretty firmly. Then we're gonna check back in on that in a little bit and see if it peels up at all. But yeah, I think this stuff will work good, at least for the purposes of this weekend. Then I'll make some actual proper ones with uh, thicker uh, vinyl. This stuff is just thick enough though that it doesn't require transfer tape, so that's nice. Oh man, now I'm talking about back pain and stuff. I can feel it. <laughs> uh, okay. Hardly winter in New York. Yeah, more vibrant, definitely. Um, let's see, plenty of winter there. Yeah, wasn't it snowing there recently, White Raven? How about the volcanic activity across the water? Wait, there's volcanoes? Uh, Mount Rang, volcano erupts in Indonesia. Oh, geez. By the way, um, Portland's the only city in North America that has an active volcano within city limits. It's Mount Tabor. <laughs> <laughs> you can book it to have weddings in there too. Damn. Oh, hang on. We have photos from outer space. Wait, volcanoes erupting. I want a distant world. Um, hang on. Is there a news button we can hit here? Two minutes ago. Wait, was this like a few hours? Like today? Uh, uh, what? Freaking Washington Post. Paywall. Um, Dan, are you going to put them all over your chair? So the idea is when you get a yellow card playing soccer, you have to get put one lemon on the side of your guard for every yellow card you get. Um, I won't say I'm immune from yellow cards being a goalie, but I can definitely generate penalty kicks if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna have to, cause I've already gotten our team one penalty kick in the last tournament. Um, yeah, I might have to come up with something for that. I only play goalie. Uh, gold dust, what? Huh, crazy. Volcanoes and stuff. Um, let's see. What are the lemons for? Oh yeah, they're gonna be for the power soccer. It's just something our team is doing. I can't remember how that came up. We were, I think we were hanging out at a restaurant after the last tournament. And I don't remember how it came up. But yeah, it's just basically, you have to show, show the world every time you cause a a yellow card. <laughs> it was that one about gold dust. What 
Was this the article? I don't know, whatever. Something. Um, let's see here. What do you do for a living? A little of this, a little of that. <laughs> we'll say I'm a 65% YouTuber, I guess, now. <laughs> uh, watch that vlog 421 when you repaired the seal on the Jazzy. Oh, um, was that the quick and dirty repair? Uh, let's see YouTube. I think this normally works. Just like totally normal and then the number. Oh, let me pull it up so you guys can see it. Ah, uh, yes, this one. Uh, so I leave up all my older videos. Like, I don't know, some of the really older ones, older stuff is kind of cringe, but I'm like, eh, whatever. Uh, is that really loud? Uh, let's see, make this bigger. No, I don't want free stuff. We will mute this. And then... Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, this is not the one I'm currently selling. Which nobody messaged me about, which is kind of weird. I put it on Craigslist, of all places. Um, I think in a later video, I took apart the gearbox on this chair, too. Huh, anyways. Um, I turned my on-off switch. Wait, I turned off my on-off switch. Set the other beeps to one and replace the horn with the footrest height adjust. Wait, what, freewheeling? Oh, so you turn off the startup sound, okay. You turn down the other beeps, all right. Oh, and you remap the horn button. Wait, freewheeling, can you do that with the, so was that with the quick config app or can you remap buttons on the joystick? I see, I have not had a chance yet to play around with Power Platform. Um, I do have a, a tentatively penciled in scheduled day to go meet up with someone that works in the industry and has a power platform and we want to learn some stuff. Um, but I, I'm not even sure what you can do with those yet. Iceland volcanoes, they're terrible. Um, but people trying to film themselves around the lava. Ugh. <laughs> do not screw with lava. Like, seriously. Hey, Jay, how's it going? Uh... I want a wheelchair support where, so freewheeling, we were kind of talking about like, you know, for a while, the, was it the NFL? There, there was some weird, like super contact version of football or rugby or something like that. We were thinking about making another version of power soccer. That's kind of like that, where it's about contact <laughs> and kind of changing up the chairs and putting some isolation on the seating. So you can like smash into people and stuff <laughs> like a more full contact version. Yeah, wheelchair hockey is kind of interesting. There used to be um, some people doing wheelchair ho hockey in Portland or near here, but then they went away and nobody knows why. Um, it was like, they use these carts that have like carpet on the bottom. That was kind of interesting. I've never actually seen it in person though. Have you ever had to sit in the penalty box? Uh, so there's no penalty box in soccer, but if you do things incorrectly, so Mm, there is a video of this. I wonder how or where I can make it appear. I don't think I can find it on the stream right now. But what was going on was I was on the far corner of the goal box and there was another person. So my guard was kind of facing out across the gym. Their guard was facing the goal post and the ball was right next to us. There was a little gap about this wide behind the goal post and my chair. And... I can't just turn because I'll kick the ball in myself. So what I was trying to do was reposition my chair, staying close to him while backing up and turning to close that little gap. But you know how the soccer chairs are. like It, it was literally just me and my hand not doing what I wanted it to, um, which that's a thing with soccer. It happens, you know. Um, but I tried to reposition my chair, and what I wound up doing was if you swing out and then back and hit someone, even if the ball is between you and them, that can get you a penalty kick. Um, so I went to swing out and I went a little bit too far and came back too fast and smashed, I hit them just enough. Like you can have contact in soccer, um, generally if the ball is between you and them, but it depends on the refs. If that contact is enough to jostle them a certain amount, 
or knock their hand off the joystick, then that's not okay. But I just, I swung out and trying to move back. It looked like I just went like that and hit them. But anyways, uh, then we had two refs. One was using the international rules and one was using the U.S. rules for the penalty kick. And the ball was like six feet from the goal. Normally, the goalie, you have to be behind the line for the penalty kick and you can move around. But they deemed, this is where the refs were butting heads, they deemed that I was not allowed to move until the ball was kicked. Which means they're going to get a goal. Like, if they hit the ball the way they want, there's literally nothing you can do in the amount of time that it takes for them to hit the ball before it crosses the line and make my chair do anything. Um, so I just sat there and I'm like, okay, they're going to get a goal. Like, I kind of positioned a little bit forward so I could spin around if the ball went behind me. But even with that, there's not enough time to get the chair to spin around. So anyways, there's a lot of fun stuff like that that, that happens. Um, but yeah, that's how I got us a penalty kick. <laughs> uh, people messing with lava, natural selection, <laughs> to be fair. I know, right? Uh, wait, where's that one meme? I can never find it when I want. Yeah, anyways, the moment has passed. Um, the Pearl Mirror programmed it all in his app. Oh, okay, gotcha. Eight speed pre... Yeah, eight, up to eight profiles. I don't think really more than three are typically necessary. On my daily chair, I have two. One for indoor and one for outdoor. Um, although, depending on the situation, it can be ha handy to replicate what Invacare used to call the ramp and curb mode, where it's full acceleration, low speed, and all the torque. That way you can kind of get over thresholds and stuff a little bit easier. <laughs> Sumo wrestlers, yeah, inflatable suit, like the wheelchair version, yeah. <laughs> My F5 had an estimated range of 184 miles today. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, and that's the thing. I I sent them some feedback about the Permobile app. They did make a few changes based on it, but the algorithm for predicting your estimated range is all over the place. And if you just run around inside for a few days, the number's going to go way down. If one day you take a 6 or 10 mile trip, for the next few days it's going to be way high. Um, all things being equal... 12 to 14 miles is your maximum real world, real world range if you have group 24 batteries and just plan accordingly that way. I don't pay attention to those estimates. <laughs> My wife wants roller derby for chairs. That'd kind of be like rugby, rugby, I think maybe, AKA murder ball. Um, I'm not sure though. Uh, put me on a ventilator non-invasively. So this huge bike most of the day. Any tips for wearing a nose mask? Ah, Christopher, yes. So that's something I've been preparing myself for mentally. I will be in the same boat at some point eventually. Um, they have some different style of masks for the non-invasive, you know, just sort of like the nose ones that go over the top. Um, I haven't used any of those yet, but um, honestly, I'm not opposed to it because whenever I have breathing assistance, being able to breathe is so much nicer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know about wearing a nose mask all the time. Like, nose might get a little bit irritated. They do have, uh, there's one lady that we play soccer with when we travel that uses one. Mm, let me see. I forget what it's called. Uh... Mm hmm Oh, that was it, actually. This one here. The, uh... Actually, I think I have a meme photo. Yeah. There's this one image I found that was pretty hilarious. Yeah, this is the one here. Um, that I've seen this one lady use. Goes on the top of your head. 
And I think there's, yeah, this one does not have the cushions that go into your nostrils. So I think these should be less irritating, maybe. Again, I have not worn one of these during the day yet. Um, just going off of what I've seen someone else wear. Um, yeah, it's the uh, Dreamwear, here, I'll just, oh, yeah, here's what it's called. Here's a link to that. Whoops, it's too long. Hang on. Uh, can I copy this without tracking? Does this browser have that function? Copy without parameters? There we go. So maybe one of those. I think it's just kind of trial and error. Um, uh, Christopher, are they looking at using like a Trilogy or something like that? Or something that has a battery backup or whatnot? Doing the non-invasive stuff and staying out in front of it, though, is the way to go. That means you've got decent doctors, uh, because if you wait too long, you'll have to end up with a trach. And it can be avoided in a lot of cases, you know, if they're pretty proactive about stuff. Congratulations for being 65% YouTube, says David. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm just ca kind of catching up on chat here. Do, do, do. Did 21st Century let you program your boom battery? They write a program email to you. Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah, so update on the. <clears throat> hang on a second. Coffee. Update on the banner situation. Uh, they came out to our soccer practice. Uh, they brought a couple of chairs with them that they had tuned up and actually got it pretty good, but. Um, without sharing too much, they are interested in the power soccer market and said, I have some ideas for things to work on. Uh, took a bunch of notes, measured a bunch of stuff. Um, I, you know, kind of explained to them like the strike force chairs are really, you can really only play for about 90 minutes at a time before things start getting hot and you have to stop and recharge. Um, you know, so cooling and batteries and he's like, yeah, we can take care of that. Um, he was talking about modifying the chain drives a little bit to be a little more compatible um, with a soccer type thing. But uh, so as far as me getting my chair, the plan is I'm going to go out to their factory later next month, maybe early June, and they're going to show me some stuff and then kind of train me on installing the speed upgrade kit that they're going to have and whatnot. And uh, yes, you can in fact get a bounder that goes what do they say, 11.8 miles an hour? Basically 12 miles an hour. Um, but when I get the new chair, I'm going to do some testing and figure out how much that affects the hill climbing ability. Because obviously you're changing the sprockets and the gear ratios, which affects torque and whatnot. Um, but yeah, be a lot of interesting stuff with that. But uh, later on this next month um, or early June, I'm gonna be heading out there and picking up my chair and talking to them on some stuff. Um, but they, if you do have a Lynx access key and you have a bounder and you need to change programming, uh, they have a guy that will write you a program and email it to you. So that is something they do. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. I got a Lynx programmer that will plug it in my chair. Yeah. Uh, by the way, there is PC software available for the Lynx programming for Windows as well. Oh, hey, awesome, awesome, Minnesota. I always forget your name when I'm streaming. Uh, maybe you don't want to say it. Anyways, whatever. How's it going? <laughs> uh, let's see. Ah, U812 getting a new chair tomorrow. Excellent. Everyone's getting their chairs delivered. It's great. I saw wheelchair sumo. Oh, yeah, I already said that. Uh, oh, you've got... I think on one of my old chairs, I labeled that idiot mode. So like when I'm at the hospital or something and someone needs to drive my chair out of the way, they basically can't injure themselves or the chair because it's so slow. But yeah, that's a good call, having a profile for that. Um, I also work three jobs. Uh, I hate all the crap that goes with it in regards to disabilities. Main job is extremely accommodating, but the other three suck. Yeah, being out there in the workforce can be tricky for sure. 
Ah, you've got a Quickie P222. Nice. Yeah, so the motors in that chair, or the P200 series, are what the original soccer chairs were based on. Oh, a Trilogy EV3000. Okay, cool. Yeah, those are pretty decent machines, actually. Uh, try and get some extra batteries for it, though. I don't know if they'll pay for it, but they're handy to have. Hey, Michael, how's it going? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a public Discord right now. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to do that, really. Uh, just talk to dealer. Hardware's on the chair. Connection issues. Say I try Android. Here back tomorrow. Oh, are you trying to get the My Permobile app working? Is that the problem you're having, Deep Park? Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have a public Discord. <laughs> um, Ray asks, you wait 12, what chair are you getting? Oh, Quantum Edge HD with eye level. All right, cool. So at least with a Quantum Edge HD, you can get group 24 batteries. Most of their other chairs are group 22 for some reason. Look up for manual wheelchair, orange and black color. There's two different models. Can you tell me if they'd be any good to have? Uh, David, we might need more specific keywords to look up that. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, Chris is the guy's name. A big bounder wrote a program for my chair. Uh, hit a home run, got the speed and angle sensor shake now. Oh, uh, Koi, are you the person I was talking to? I can't remember which communication method, but were we talking previously about that? Uh, getting the angle tilt thing taken care of? You call it snail? Nice, snail mode. <laughs> South Alabama. Oh, quick config. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, hopefully they can get that sorted out. Uh, what's the Ace Hardware played along and said she went Ultra or Clean Burn? Uh, not sure what you mean there. Boy, I have been sitting in a weird position in the footwell of the van and halfway on my chair. So that could have something to do with my low back being cranky. <laughs> what was possible to get the speed turned up on the X8? Uh, I don't know how to program those old Pilot Electronics, Robin. That's the trick. I think you have to use a handheld little programmer that looks like it was built in a project box or something. Um, <coughs> mm, excuse me. Um, oh, actually here, we've got, let me open up this other thing. We had another option for lemon stickers. There's also the, um, <coughs> where is it? The anger, <coughs> excuse me a second while I cough. There was also the angry lemon, but I thought, whoops, uh, hang on a second, uh, Windows be doing Windows things. There we go. Uh, yes, I thought this one was more hilarious, especially for, uh, you know, getting in trouble on soccer versus this one. This one makes people think maybe you're trying to get yellow cards. <laughs> But yeah, there's a few different options. Uh, let's see here. You missed it, Dan. I sent my daughter to get blinker fluid. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is funny though, my old uh, 93 Dodge Caravan, the rear window washer, the rear window washer fluid fill is built into the taillight on the driver's side. There's a little hatch that you open and you can pour a gallon of blinker fluid into the taillight. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> uh, hey, Dogs Rule, how's it going? Yeah, streaming on the bus today. I'm getting ready to head out tomorrow for lots of driving for a soccer tournament. Making it a two-day drive, so it'll be nice and uh, nice and easy. Staying in a casino tomorrow night, so that'll be interesting. Um, been trying to get the van uh, sorted out with the GPS tracker and the remote starter and everything. Um, do I... There's an app on my phone now. I tested it and it worked. I guess I can't show it though because it has a map on it. Or maybe we can. But there's a temperature sensor, so it'll say how warm it is inside the van. Uh, it'll keep track of the battery voltage on a graph. Uh, tell me the status of the doors being open and closed and all kinds of cool stuff. And remote start it and lock and unlock it. Um, it's uh, $54 a year. 
for that functionality. It uses uh, AT&T's LTE network. Mm, excuse me. But since these Power Stroke vans like to go missing, I figured it'd be good to have GPS tracking built in. You can set it up to text you anytime the van moves or anytime it gets started up, or even if a door opens or something like that. Bitter lemon, yes. <laughs> Uh, happy lemon's nice. Yeah, I kind of agree. <laughs> Nitrous X8, yes. Don't forget your charger. Yeah, I haven't even started packing yet. Leaving at 9 a.m. tomorrow. So we're gonna we're gonna keep streaming r probably right till five, and then I need to stop because I gotta finish the van before it gets dark. <laughs> uh, does Permobile and other chair makers let the individual program their own chairs? So the way they let them program the chairs is basically, um, what do you call that? A, uh, what's that term when you have to like pay to do something? Uh, anyways, I can't think of it, but if you can get a hold of a programmer, you can program them. Quantum, for example, QLogic 3, their programmers are unobtainium. If you do manage to get a hold of one, they are sort of time-based, and if the clock runs out, they'll quit working. Um, anything RNet powered, you just have to get yourself a USB dongle. Uh, those are like 600 bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I like paywall, um, or something with barrier to entry, eh, whatever. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, it comes down to being able to afford a programmer, basically. Quantum QLogic 3, you're not gonna program it. Um, everything else, though, you should be able to. Um, Invacare uses dynamic links. You can get the access keys for those. Those are fairly readily available now. Um, but yeah, it comes down to money, basically. Uh, yes, I am... Enoch is riding with me, and we're driving down. We're, we're making it a two-day trip. Everyone else is going to be leaving Friday and doing it all in one go. But I wanted to kind of take a couple extra days and go easy. Oh yeah, I did get the driver's seat. Did I mention that? See, I film all this stuff and then I don't always wind up using it, but I got the driver's seat set up so the angle of it is correct now and it's lifted up a little ways. The uh, Ford stock seat bases sit at a little bit of an angle and when you bolt the seat on, it makes them level. But since I had a Rikon um, transfer seat base on there, um, the seat winds up sitting forward. So anyways, I made some brackets and uh, got that sorted out. And it's comfortable. I had to make a couple of adjustments. The first time it was too tall, and then my wrist was at a weird angle when I had it in the spinner on the steering wheel. Uh, so I readjusted that back down, and now we're good. Um, yeah, I mean, don't say it if you know, but like with the power soccer stuff, we have a few, a few miners, as it were, on our team, and just I don't say where we're going in advance. It kind of sucks because I know people live in the area sometimes, and they might want to come say hello. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't advertise in advance where things are going on. Um, like I said, if you know, don't say it in the chat, but if you happen to know where I'm going, it is on the West coast. Um, feel free to stop by and say hi. <laughs> I may not be super coherent though, because the lighting in this facility is really bad. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, fun fact, Permobile pays $4 a month per chair to have sailor service. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, someone's got to pay for the LTE service. <laughs> Where can you get an Arnett dongle? <sighs> the one reliable place that I personally don't like giving money to is Power Soccer Shop. They reliably have them for sale. I think they're like $700 or something insane. Here, let's look it up. Da -da 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 -da. You can find them on eBay occasionally. There was one other place. Oh, you can order them through, you can order them through Build My Wheelchair, but apparently they're $750 through them. But yeah, $705. It's the only reliable place. Um, yeah, I'll just say that there, it'll be nice to have more competition in the power soccer equipment space at some point. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. But that's the one place I know you can order them. I think they also charge for shipping and it might take two months to arrive. But yeah, anyways, that's the one reliable place I know. You can potentially find them on eBay sometimes. Let's go to Fleabay. By the way, if you go to 
flea bay, F L E A bay dot C O. That goes to my website. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Rnet dongle. You got to try a bunch of different search keywords and terms. Oh, here's one for 400 bucks right now. Do not buy this Wi Fi one. The guy selling these, there is something weird going on. Do not buy them. Um, okay, so we got them for 500 bucks right now and $400 right now. Uh, make sure they accept returns, though, just in case they want to scam you or something. Let's take returns. Oh, it's in San Jose. Uh, does not accept returns, so do not buy that because things can be dead on arrival and that's a lot of money to waste. Here's a $500 one, um, 14 day returns. Uh, it doesn't matter the access level. The OEM ones are hard to find, but a dealer one, there's a workaround for that. I've got it on the website. Um, you'll also want to search for things like uh, Quickie Programmer or Amy Systems Programmer. Okay, so it's the same one coming up there. Uh, there are handheld ones, but they can't do nearly as much as the USB dongles can. Um, also, spelling Rnet differently can have an effect with or without a dash. Uh, Rnet dongle. Uh, so that one's not there. Let's do ARNet dongle. Yeah, eBay's weird with keywords, but yeah, they is not cheap. Uh, don't forget equipment for your breathing machine. You don't want to forget it. Yes, dogs rule. Thank you. I had a bit of an issue. I've actually got sitting right here an old mask that's still usable that I'm also bringing. Because my thought is I need to be able to accidentally run over something with my power chair and still be able to breathe. That first trip to, uh, where was it? Um, Emeryville. <laughs> um, yeah, that turned into a whole thing with my breathing mask. <laughs> um... Don't smash your chair now, then in the trailer. Yeah, my chair is going to be in my van, so. Uh, someone else is towing a trailer uh, with all of our soccer equipment in it, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. Just make, trying to make sure I'm not missing any chat messages. Ooh, coffee. Temporary mute. There's no such thing as don't accept returns on eBay. Well, yeah, if you pay through PayPal, um, yeah. I've run into a few things, though, where sellers don't accept returns, and it turns into a whole thing. Um, but, yeah, it's best if it says that they accept them right there. Thanks for the tip. Did I tip the coffee driver? Apparently I did. My watch just said thanks for the tip. Except no substitute to rear-wheel drive for life on a rural family farm with my folks, only chair. Yeah, rear-wheel drive is good for that. You just got to have space indoors if you have a rear-wheel drive chair. Uh, I live out in the country. It's by far best to hunt with. That only covers buyer's remorse and even if they would lose it. Yeah, the dispute process, you're right, Chris, is pretty heavily weighted in favor of the buyer. Um it can just turn into a little bit of a hailstorm sometimes. Usually in the end, you'll you'll get your money back, but... Mm, excuse me, but yeah. Also, if they tick the box that says they accept returns, that usually means a slightly more re reputable seller, perhaps. And it just makes... makes What am I trying to say? If someone accepts returns, they're running more of a business, maybe, and they're a little bit b more willing to work with you. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, under the joystick, what size are the screws? Uh, they're usually going to be some size of Allen's. I'm not sure. Hang on. Let's see if we can do this. Here. Hang on. Can we zoom in further? Let's zoom in all the way. And I might have to use my seat lift here. Oh, focus, focus. Come on, focus. There we go. Now, these little guys right here. They're some size of Allen. I don't know what exactly, but uh, they could be something else depending on if your DME <coughs> motion uh, decided to do something weird. But 
factory, they should be, sorry about the fast zoom there. Factory, they should be Allen, panhead Allen cap bolts or screws, whatever. What What's the differentiation when uh, in size where things go from bolt to screw? I assume it has to do with the size, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just flip the thing up and wiggle it around, and you'll you'll see movement uh, if something's loose for sure. So I finally hear back from Permobil. They're going to take a serious check about everything in the electronics. Good, Robin. They've been giving you the runaround, or your local peeps have been giving you the runaround for a while. Temporary mute. That was a good one. Best to avoid the stress. Yeah. Nose hair zoom mode on. Oh, I haven't trimmed my nose hair recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, something, something, lemons, um, oh, let's check in on our lemon sticker. Ah, it seems to be adhering really well to this corrugated surface. Trying to do this backwards. Yeah, that's uh, that's taking some work to get it off of there. All right, cool. Sold. Here, I'll give you a link to that glossy vinyl in case you guys need it for some reason. Inkjet printable. Yeah, that held on really well. Nice. That's a challenging surface. Uh, hang on, let me pull up a link here. <sighs> orders. What have I ordered recently? Da, 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 da. Printable vinyl sticker. Waterproof. As long as your ink is waterproof, they are waterproof. Uh, Terran scratch resistant. Hang on. Where's, oh, there we go. Gloss finish. Come on. Give me the link. This is an Amazon associate link. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but I make a small percentage on the transaction. I don't have the stream deck here. Um, let's see. You have to be more specific, Robin. Which of your permobiles do you hate? <laughs> oh man. Replaced my 120 amp uh, Arnet module. Now getting an error. 8183. Ooh. Uh, how old is your chair, Jason? And while you're doing that, I will look up the thingies. Let's close the volcanoes and margaritas. That's a weird combo. Let's go. Click here. Uh, let's do Arnet codes. I think 8183 might be out of range of... Oh, wait. Oh, no, we're good. Eight one, uh, eight three. Bad settings. Ah, okay. Um, so, uh, do you have a programming dongle for your chair? And also, why did you swap the module out? I'm curious. Did I also ask how old the chair is and which model of chair it is? Uh, let's see. I define screw as being self-tapping and bolt if not. What about machine screws, though? Just to throw a wrench in the works. What do you call those? Are they screws? They're not self-tapping. Do you remember the TDX wheelchair control? There's a guy on YouTube who talks about wheelchair parts. He lives in Florida. He's wanting to buy the wheelchair controller you have. Uh, what's the name of this YouTube person, David? I'm curious. Oh, the blue one. I ah, got you, Robin. Uh, I have an F3. I'm thinking about changing for an M3. Would you recommend it for daily use? Okay, so Ghost. Is ride quality or suspension important to you? I use the term shopping cart loosely, but the M3 has significantly worse suspension than the F3. If ride quality doesn't matter to you and you want a uh, mid-wheel chair, sure, go for it. But you're going to get some shopping cart vibes when you're rolling around on the sidewalks of that thing, for sure. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, Jason, if you heard my question, or did you hear my questions? I think it was you. Um, yeah, so basically, 
the best thing to do if you have a programming dongle and you swapped out your module is put the old one back in, copy all your settings off of it, put the new one in, and then copy everything over. Um, because it probably came from another random brand of chair and the settings are kind of doing this. Uh, I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff and get the bounder. Nice, Thomas. Uh, splurge for the lithium battery option. It's worth it. Uh, oh, it was you, Koi. All right, cool. Yeah, it was funny because when we were chatting about that, the next day I was talking to Bounder face to face and uh, mentioned it. And he was like, oh, yeah, Chris gotten something, had gotten something set up for it. But yeah, check your messages that I can do. Do, 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 do. Oh, what is this? Uh, oh, oh, okay. Hang on here. Please hold. Stop the presses. Uh, let me load this into a browser that you all can see. Wait, Raven just sent us a link to a programming dongle that is significantly cheaper. Uh, internets. $580. Um... And you can actually buy stuff from Sunrise Medical. So here's the link to that. Mm. Deal of the day. Um, yeah, so apparently you can buy a programming dongle for them for 580 bucks. I can't believe I'm saying $580 is a bargain. That's insane. But it is cheaper or something. <laughs> um, yeah, about that. All right, see you later, Mark. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, I've got a camera mount I'm putting in the van. I'm gonna record a few clips here and there, but it's, the trip's not gonna be like a dedicated video necessarily, but yeah, it's gonna be a nice little vacation, that's for sure. Um, F3 rides better, yep. M3 is center, so performance on grass and train may not be as good as front wheel, that's true. Uh, I'll get back to you whenever you find his name. All right, cool. Uh, David, have we chatted on Twitter, I think? If so, we can use that. Um... Let's see. Uh, Ghost, I, or Ghost, Ghostozo, or I don't know how you say that. Um, I'm curious, what's your rationale for switching from an F3 to an M3, or front wheel to mid wheel? Uh, is it just like the space, or the way you like it drives better? Or um, I'm curious what your mindset is, or why you want to change. This is, the, this is the info that I store in the back of my head when people ask me stuff later. Because uh, sometimes people have really good reasons for that, you know? Uh, let's see here. Ah, Danny, or Dan, is it, were you Danny Tech before? Was your username? Did you change it? Um, yeah, you buy your bearings from Southwest Medical. Nice. Ridiculous for a USB dongle, but there it is. Exactly right, Raven. Uh, oh, it's a track chair. Uh, reason I change it is getting hot and shutting down. Yeah, so track chairs are really hard on electronics. Um... You almost got to get some sort of cooling fan or 24-volt server fans on that thing to keep it cool. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to have a programming dongle and flash over the original software. Um, that bad settings thing, you're not going to be able to get around it without a dongle, unfortunately. Actually, the Arnet handheld programmers can do basic file copying, so one of those would work. But I still don't recommend anyone spend money on a handheld if you're looking to buy either a dongle or a programmer. Always go with the dongle. Oh, okay, cool, David. I find it terrifying downhill with my F5. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the whole wheelie thing and going fast and all that. Do you mean give me a huge runaround when I was first setting up my chair? Uh, last time I was there, I accidentally left the dongle plugged in. <laughs> nice. Excellent, Michael. Has several dongles in a drawer. Maybe they will forget about it. <laughs> Mum's the word. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Uh, how does the bounder do on the beach? So, their off-road one supposedly does well on sand. Mine's technically an off-road one, but I re-geared it. Um, I have not personally tried it. I would assume it's going to be like everything else, where the soft, fluffy sand is kind of a problem, uh, but the harder pack stuff will work. But I don't have first-hand knowledge of that yet. Um, once I get my new chair, that's part of the stuff I'm going to be testing, though, for sure. Um, by the way, Joe, do you still have that X8 or that four-wheel drive chair? Did you ever get that thing going? 
Uh, hated going downhill. I'll sit or wheel drive. It felt tippy. Uh, appreciate your advice. No worries. I had a grocery hang on the back of my chair, slightly downhill. Oh, jeez. Ah, okay, I got you, Robin. Yeah, so an, M, an M5 has good suspension, but an M3 is shopping cart, shopping cart mode activated. So yeah, M5, decent suspension, like pretty good. Um, but the M3, not so much. Mm. Oh, okay, uh, mute for coffee, please hold. Hmm. By the way, does anyone use a nebulizer? Uh, specifically the, uh, the duo nebs? I noticed, man, this, this, this lens on this camera, it always screws with my brain. <laughs> I'm super wide. Uh, oh, probably shouldn't point that side of the box. The reason I ask is they used to come in these little ampules that were, um, uh, attached like five or six of them together. Recently, I don't know if it's just my healthcare provider, they've started coming in these little individual packets, which is pretty cool. The old ones, it was like a grid of like five of these all stapled together, which was super annoying. But uh, yeah, recently, they've started coming in little self-serve, single-serve things. Um, this is the Duoneb, which is ipitropium bromide and albuterol sulfate inhalation solution. This stuff is a rocket launcher. This is what they give you if you have like chemical gas exposure at the ER or something like that. And it's like 27 cups of coffee all at once. But oh my God, does this stuff work? For me, this is not medical advice. But anyways, just random side note. I noticed they started coming with these. I like it a lot better. Luckily I have no issues with breathing. Excellent U812. Try and keep it that way, however you do that. <laughs> um, the heavy bounder does go through sand, they said on video. Yeah, I think it depends. I, I don't know if it has to be the off-road version. Their top speed's a little bit lower because they changed the gearing. But they have a few different configurations. I, you can't just say all bounders will work on the sand. I just don't know which specific configurations are best suited for it. That's, I'm just trying to be careful with that because I've, I've learned over the years when I say, oh yeah, this thing is good, people go buy it. And then and that fell on the floor. And then later I feel bad because bits of info were left out and they got something that's not working the way they wanted. So yeah. Um, can you keep the Amy Systems chair? Says Bruce. Um, I still have no idea. They're actually sending me some more parts for it. Um, there's going to be more videos with that. Uh, they're going to be sending me the soccer kit. Oh, and I still have to make the video about the off-road kit as well. Uh, that's not going to happen until I'm done moving at the warehouse, which can't remember if I've said in the live stream, dude man that was going to take over the lease decided to I can't release birds from both of my hands easily, but he backed out. So the on-site manager is now looking for someone else to take over my lease. So that kind of pushed the timeline back, which that place cost me $51 a day. Uh, actually more if you count what the insane prices from the electric company are. Um, but yeah, um, I'll be working on that Amy Systems video with the off-road conversion kit. Um, Probably the beginning of this next month here, at the latest. Uh, Dan, they said is a key part of that statement. Yes, exactly. A lot of people say a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to wheelchairs. And how many miles you can go on a charge? <laughs> Although when Bounder says you can go 30 miles on a charge, you can. <laughs> um, since I got my F3 in 2020, I haven't had one single issue. Nice, Ray. I think the only actual failure on my chair was the seat lift thing. I'll kind of give that like a uh, 70% probably my fault because of how I use this chair. But I have heard from other people that they've had the same thing break. Um, so, yeah. Ken says, I'm super wide not in a camera. <laughs> uh, I took that chair to Seaside last weekend. Oh, nice. Dry sand, wet sand. Nice. That's awesome, Joe. I'm glad to hear you're actually using it. By the way, Old Dusty is still... I, I haven't done the completed video, but I've got the control system swapped out on it. I got the wheels bolted on with the adapters and everything. That's all good. Um, I just need to clean up a little bit more of the wiring, but the new control system I put on there is awesome. It seems to be working good, but yeah. 
Yeah, all-wheel drive is amazing. Nice. Uh, what does it help with? Oh, are you talking about the uh, nebulizer stuff, Chris? Uh, if that's the case, um, this is part of my treatment program for my breathing issues. Make sure the lungs are opened up and I can get air in there and stuff. Uh, I'll show this nonchalantly, but apparently the bottom parts of both of my lungs are slightly collapsed. So it's good to um, uh, keep the airways open and whatnot. But I use the nebulizer with the uh, the big green pickle. If you know what that is, it attaches on there. It's like a vib... <laughs> this sounds weird out of context, but it's a thing that you breathe through and it vibrates the air going into your lungs to help kind of knock stuff out, like mucus or whatever that might be in there. Um, but yeah. Tanks get stuck in the sand. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> I wouldn't be bold enough to take any chair on the sand. Uh, I took this F3 on the beach. Um, actually, hang on. Uh, internets. Uh, now for the part where I try to figure out what the video is titled. Um, I've gotten better. When I first started, like the titles had nothing to do with the video, and I didn't put anything in the video description. But I have gotten better about titling things. Let's see, videos, search. Um, let's do clean. No. Uh, F3. No, we'll try sand. I might have to go into studio and use the more powerful search tools. Ah, there we go. Cleaning leg rest and chair repair. Permobile, why did you do this? What What is with these plastics? Like Velcro, really? Ugh. By the way, another video called OCD Fueled Mods where I fix that problem and drive a bunch of screws through the side of the chair. Okay, um... Oh, I forgot. I didn't really show going on the beach very much. And now it is time to move on to cleaning this thing up, which is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> yeah, the beach that day was a little nasty. One of the reasons I came out to the warehouse... Oh, did I not show it? Because I have my... Well, anyways, I took this chair all the way out on the beach. And uh, it worked all right. I just had to pick my lines and not go in the fluffy stuff. Uh, oh, here we go. The aggressive tread tires are where it's at. I'm pretty sure if I was using standard power chair tires, Astro I smell? would not have been able to get anywhere. Now, granted, you used to have to be really careful and not change direction suddenly, not accelerate too hard, otherwise you just dig in and sink. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the weather down here. It's like cloud. Yeah, so this particular spot on the beach, there was this, um, I forget which beach this is, but there was uh, sort of a, a stream that ran through that came all the way from the parking lot, which means there was damp sand, and I was able to use that uh, to get down there. I don't think the background is finished rendering. <laughs> What's going on over here? Yeah, so there you can see, that's the parking lot. And this creek runs all the way down, so there's some wet sand to get all the way down there. Oh, there's a rock. Oh, I'm trying to get stuck. I'll tell you though, these aggressive tread tires work really well. There we go. I need to pay attention and remember I'm on sand. Oop. I ventured, huh? And don't change direction suddenly. Yeah, I know. I gotta, gotta remember my caster angle. There we go. I have to consciously remember that this is sand <laughs> and drive accordingly. But I'm gonna link that video that I. Oh wait. Uh, I remember that this. Was that? This is sand. Yeah, so Ryan has the Honda Mini Trail tires on, was that an F3 or a C300 he had that day? Hang on here. Uh, oh, that's his old C300. Yeah, so he did pretty well with the Mini Trail tires on there. Why were we, why was I talking about all that? I don't even remember. Um, <clears throat> the all-wheel drive is amazing. So I should get an F3 like yours. I'm having to see you to get in your chair. Yeah, so <clears throat> just so you know, if you're not used to front wheel drives, they are super frustrating at first when you first get one. It can take up to a month to get used to them. 
but at some point it kind of clicks in your head. It takes a little bit more maneuvering and driving technique indoors, but you can get into a lot smaller spaces and whatnot. And another thing I like, for example, um, I think I've demonstrated this before. See this cup of coffee that's just out of my reach over here? Yes, I have two. Um, if I'm in a mid-wheel chair and I want to grab that cup of coffee, I have to like back up, move over, do like a whole S-turn or whatever. Now, granted, your arms work like mine do. If I want to reach that, all I have to do is swivel because the front wheel drive and the back goes over that way and now I can grab it. So there are a few things that I really like with the front wheel drives. And you know, something over here too, I can just swivel all the way over without really moving and grab stuff on this table over here. Um, whereas a mid-wheel, you know, you'd have to do a little bit of shuffling. Um, things like elevators are a challenge in a front wheel drive chair. I will eventually make a video about how not to get stuck in an elevator in a front wheel drive. Um, but they do take some getting used to is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you're probably going to hate it at first, but the ride quality is a lot better and you do have four shocks on this chair. You can upgrade them to the C500 shocks, which I did a video about that, which is odd. I think they intended this chair to have those because there's a cutout for the rebound hydraulic valve control in the plastics. Um, the aggressive tread tires will help your ride quality quite a bit, no matter which permobile you have. Um, they last longer, better ride quality, a lot more traction. Um, the standard Primo power tracks, I can't even get around outside in the gravel here. Um, aggressive tread, not a problem. So anyways, things to think about. I oh, asked yes, Magic Mobility. So Magic Mobility in the US just got rid of their front wheel drive and their rear wheel drive chair. All they have now is the V6 mid wheel, which is a great chair and the Magic 360, which Ra White Raven's gonna be getting one of those at some point, so that'll be cool to hear about that thing. Um, but yeah, the V6, I think, is probably one of the best all-around off-road chairs that you can still use indoors. Um, obviously, like the X8 is four-wheel drive, it goes anywhere, but good luck trying to get it into a bathroom stall at a Denny's, <laughs> you know? Um, but the, the V6, Great all-around off-road chair. Um, I miss old Dusty. Yeah, we'll let your legend live on, Joe. <laughs> ah. Oh, so Chris, you understand the doing ebbs then. Are... So I used to do a lot of swimming, and I would always use it right before I go swimming because it kind of gets your heart rate going. If you use those three times a day, Chris, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a whole lot of coffee all at once. But they work. Holy cow. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Love the beach mats. Wish more beaches. Wish more beaches had them. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got the um uh yeah, the the four-wheel drive. He's it's like a, I think it's the X8 or the whatever the older version of the Magic Mobility four-wheel drive one is what Joe is talking about, but it goes anywhere. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Fun challenge getting two power chairs with at least one being front-wheel drive in an elevator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my friend Enoch is usually with me when I'm in elevators because we're usually traveling for power soccer. He uses a mid-wheel, and he doesn't have foot plates. So he can go in and turn around in space, and it's no big deal. So usually I go in first, tuck into the corner, press the button because it's easier for me to do. He comes in and spins around. Then when the doors open, he goes straight out, and then I do a reverse S-turn and back out of the elevator. So we, we've got the process down. The only complication is when there's walking people around. Then they get all confused and do the rat dance because they think they're gonna you're gonna run over their toes because we're moving so quickly. <laughs> yeah, if new motion does the things, exactly what Raven. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the only problem with the X8 is indoors. And all the inevitable mud and dirt that gets on your tires that you have to track inside. Because you can't just take your shoes off and prance inside. <laughs> Again, I like the rear real quickie. Yeah, so the only downfall with rear wheel drive, the only one, is maneuvering around indoors in tight spaces. It is doable, but if your house is big enough to accommodate a rear wheel drive, there is no downsides to a rear wheel drive chair. They're great at everything. <laughs> Hopefully those drinking noises didn't come through. I didn't, didn't mute the mic. That's the ice maker back there making noise, by the way. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I was scrolling through chat here to see if I missed anything. Ah, I, I need to remember not to lean over. It's hard to do right now because my core muscles are kind of zapped. <laughs> um, let's see here. 
Having that chair inside is freaking loud. Funny to look at people's reaction because they jump to the side. Yeah, and any of the Magic Mobility chairs, the motors make insane noise. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Especially in the grocery store. <laughs> um, my friend with the center wheel jazzy, better hands, goes in first, turns by the buttons, and I drive straight in next and back out on arrival. Okay, yeah. It's always fun when, that's the one thing I like with power soccer and traveling, is we get a whole bunch of wheelchairs in one spot and people just don't know what to do. <laughs> Suddenly the walking people are in the minority because we're going to a place with like a hundred wheelchair users, you know? <laughs> and a lot of times half of them are staying in the same hotel. So they'll yell at you like, watch out, and then almost get run over by four more people right after that. Then they tend to keep their mouths shut. <laughs> I, I say almost run over because you get within five feet of someone they're like oh my gosh <laughs> i've never noticed the fast heartbeat from duoneb but it might be the anti-afib drugs yeah and chris the duonebs affect different people differently too um i found whether i've eaten breakfast or what i'm doing can make a difference as well um it doesn't affect everyone though no suspension yeah hopefully new motion gets the updated pre-auth fingers crossed Oh yeah, so update on my batteries and everything. Um, I called the insurance company yesterday and they were explaining to me on the phone how they can't help. Oh, I called and I was like, hey, uh, waiting for parts to get ordered. Uh, there's an authorization pending, you know, uh, just calling to check the status on that. Oh, well, we have nothing to do with ordering parts. Let me give you the phone number to, uh, hang on. That company sent you guys the pre-auth two weeks ago. And, or sent you guys the authorization two weeks ago for the parts. I'm just calling to check and see if you guys have approved it or not yet. And they start giving me all these reasons as to why I should be talking to someone else and they can't know and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, tell you what, I'm going to give you my medical record number. Why don't you look at my account and just see what you can see on your end? And they're like, okay, I guess I can do that. <laughs> Keyboard typing sounds. And then uh, they're like, oh yeah, it looks like there is an authorization here. Oh, it looks like it's been sitting here for a couple of weeks now. I'm like, okay, um, so when would you like to approve that? They're like, oh, I can work on that right now. <laughs> and I'm just thinking to myself, aren't you glad you ran your mouth all that time? This phone call could have been half as long. And it, anyways, I didn't say anything, but I was like, all right, thank you. And they're like, yeah, I'll take, I'll take care of it right now. <laughs> so anyways, uh, parts should be ordered soon. I'm, this is the first time I've gone through a DME in years to get batteries, tires, anti-flutter clutches, and uh, caster swivel bearings on the back. I normally just do it on my own, but someone reminded me that I can get free batteries that I don't have to buy myself, so might as well try. The new DME, mm, the new DME though, at least the tech I have, seems pretty legit. Mm, excuse me. Um, and he said he will allow me to supervise the repairs as well. <laughs> um, scares everybody in front of you enough to make them jump out of the way. Yeah, right. And when you've got at least two people in wheelchairs, the other people aren't as quick to run their mouths, I've found. <laughs> Get into the accessible bathroom with an XA. Yeah. Good luck with that, Robin. You'll probably wind up ripping the stall doors off. Um... <laughs> uh, Thanks from Brazil. Ah, okay. Is it Go Gostoso? Is that how you pronounce it? It's hard to tell with usernames sometimes. Um, uh, da -da. X8 definitely takes some finesse to drive indoors, yeah. I, I forget what the turning circle is. I think it's like 21 feet or something. <laughs> There's a lot of multi-point turns. Oh, by the way, um, so Bounder brought a couple of their stock chairs with uh, souped up attempted soccer tunes on them. They got it. They got the tune pretty good. I'm amazed how fast you can do a reverse J turn in a 700 pound wheelchair. Um, they've got the dynamic links dialed in pretty good. I could be going backwards at a full six miles an hour, spin around and without stop. Well, you have to stop for a split second, obviously to change direction, but I can go backwards, spin and keep moving with no delay. It's, it's amazing. I'm excited to see what they come up with for a soccer chair. <laughs> I have 30 inch doors, no X8s for me. Ah, actually, how wide is this bus door here? I'm curious. It's obnoxiously wide. It's like the whole wall's opening up. Oh, 
Let's see here. This is 43 inches. <laughs> so that's not doing too bad. The lift obviously isn't that wide, but yeah. No. Oh. Uh, Medicare just paid for my batteries. Excellent. Four power chairs and a rototiller roll into a bar. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I was just giving away a rototiller last week to a friend. It's funny you mentioned that. Mm, I think we're coming up to near the end of the stream here. Um, I need to get outside and continue working on the van. I think my van lift is wider than my bedroom door. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me find some closing music here, and I think uh, we will semi-abruptly-ish into this stream. Uh, so I'm leaving at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and uh, I still got lots to do. I have not packed yet. Uh, let's see here. What kind of music we got? What is this? No, we're not going to do more of that music. Um, what is this? It says suspenseful. Yeah, I think we'll try whatever this is. Unless this hurts people's brains, we can choose something else. Um, this is a weird song. Yeah, thank you, Ken. All right, well, thanks for watching, everyone, and um, catch you in the next video, whenever that might be. I'm not going to promise any live streams on the trip, but it might happen. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's probably just going to be from my cell phone and super jank, but... I'll see you guys when I see you, I guess is what I'm saying. So, anyways, it's uh, been fun hanging out, and I'll catch you guys next time or something. What is our ending screen here? I don't even know. Uh, oh, it's a cow. All right, that'll work. Um, yeah, something. Thank you for the stream. Great show. Hang out with like-minded people. Yeah, that's why I say it's great to just hang out with everyone that has the baseline understanding of disability and you can just chat. That's one of the reasons we do this. So anyways, catch you guys later. I have a random pair of scissors in my lap. Okay, this song is weird. Let's pick something else. Uh, this one says it's fun. Wait for it. There we go. We'll write out the last half of this. <laughs>